The boy has begun his journey. What will he bring upon the universe? Will he be a legendary hero? Or will he wreak havoc as a demon king? The adventure begins. It's all up to you. Hello and welcome to another Hot Rods Review. Today I will be talking about the anime adaptation of the manga series Eden's Zero. This series was created by the mangaka Hiro Mashima, who is well known for being the author of the popular series Fairy Tale. This connection was the only reason I even decided to watch this series, and it was better than I expected. This anime adapted 7 arcs from the manga in 25 episodes. The intro arc, the Norma arc, the Skull Fairy arc, the Gillis arc, the Digitalis arc, the Mildian arc, and finally the Sun Jewel arc. These arcs were very interesting to say the least. The first arc, the intro arc, was low-key kind of boring. There were some redeeming aspects of this arc, but overall it was a pretty bad way to start off this anime. As a matter of fact, I actually dropped this anime for a while after I watched the first episode. It was only after I pushed through the first two episodes that I was actually able to get into this story. If I'm being completely honest, the whole friendship element felt kind of wacky. Now I personally don't hate the idea of the power of friendship as most people do, but I couldn't get behind Shiki's goal to make 100 friends since he already had so many robot friends. Shiki has made it clear multiple times that he considers robots to be people and that he considered the robots of Granbell to be his friends. He doesn't seem to me like someone with extreme social anxiety like Komi-chan, so it seems like he could actually make a lot of friends pretty easily. For these reasons, I feel like this goal of making friends was just uninteresting, and it made this arc really hard to enjoy. I didn't completely hate Shiki's introduction though. I thought that the way his robot family forced him to leave the planet before they all died was pretty sad and heartwarming, but it just wasn't enough to get me interested in the rest of the story. I am very interested in Shiki's gravity powers though. I don't believe I've seen an anime protagonist with these kinds of abilities before, so I can't wait to see how this will evolve in the future. While I didn't like Shiki's introduction, I actually did enjoy Rebecca's. We got more insight as to why Happy is important to her, and I personally believe that Happy being a robot was pretty cool. That whole story kind of reminded me of Astro Boy and it made me feel sorry for these characters. I also liked Rebecca's goal of being a popular beekeeper way more than I liked Shiki's. Maybe I can relate to it more since I do want to be a popular YouTuber someday, but it also just felt more challenging than making 100 friends. Not to mention her goal of being a beekeeper is the main thing that drove Shiki and Rebecca to search for mother. This huge goal is something I can respect since it's been established that it is a very difficult task. This goal jumpstarted the entire adventure, and I am here for it. The normal arc was a really decent follow up arc, especially since the last arc was kind of terrible. I enjoyed the time travel angle, but the reveal was also just a bit too obvious for me. Maybe it's because I tend to think about time travel a lot, but I just assumed that they either traveled back in time or the entire planet was thrown back in time. Looking back, Rebecca and Happy probably should have been aware of chronophages since they were not isolated on a planet like Shiki was. But anyways, I like this arc because it added some new members to the team. We first got introduced to the younger Y Steiner from the year 442. He was a pretty cool mysterious character and I found him to be quite humorous. But although I liked Wise, E.M. Pino was definitely the star of this arc. Through her we got more additional world building that conveyed how robots got mistreated in this universe. Seeing Pino's sadness and suffering really made me feel bad for her, and for me this is what really stood out during this arc. The villains in this arc weren't anything special. They were just mean thugs who honestly didn't pose any real threat to Shiki or to the rest of the group. But overall I do think this arc was a nice introduction to two new characters. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Skull Fairy arc was a nice short arc that set up the rest of the story. I thought that the fight between fake Elsie and Shiki was pretty cool. It is where I first saw the true potential of Shiki's powers. His ether care coated his full body in a way that we've never seen before. I could tell that this form is going to be something important in later arcs. And maybe Elsie and Justice will appear in later arcs as well. I actually really liked Elsie and that might honestly be because she looks exactly like Urza Scarlet from Fairy Tale. I know a lot of people don't like the fact that Hiro Mashima used similar character designs for this story, but I didn't mind it that much. I honestly somewhat enjoyed it because I miss Fairy Tale, and I think that adding some references is pretty cool. This was a very short arc, but it was also very entertaining. The Gilst arc is where the quest to complete the Eden Zeros in order to find Mother officially started. We got to see Shiki inherit the Eden Zero and become the new Demon King. We also got introduced to Witch, Homura, and Sister much later in this arc. With Witch, we further the theme of humanity and robots as she referred to herself as an object in multiple occasions yet Shiki continued to view her as a person with a heart and soul. We also got introduced to Homura who has a pretty funny quirk. Her inability to be dishonest made me laugh quite a bit and I found her character to be quite charming. The reveal that she got training under Valkyrie was a cool twist and it set up a future arc. The plot of the kidnapped beekeepers was honestly kind of terrifying, especially since Rebecca was one of the girls who got snatched. This arc was the most intriguing one so far since it felt like it had the highest stakes. Sure, none of the villains could stand up to Shiki's strength, but if he didn't get there in time, it was possible that Rebecca would be turned to stone forever. We met the true sister when Y saved her later on Gilst. Her introduction was short and brief, but I got the sense that she was very powerful. But because of the short introduction, I feel like we really don't know sister that well. And in future arcs, she doesn't really get involved too much in the adventure. She just spends most of her time on the Eden Zero, so it almost feels like a stranger is part of the group. It was also really cool to see a chronophage play an important role in ending the arc, as it was crucial to understanding the situation that happened on the planet Norma. Since it was important in two arcs thus far, I have a feeling like it's going to come back again and maybe it will be important to the series. Overall, this was a pretty phenomenal arc. It was my favorite this season as it offered more stakes, more opportunity for failure, and more excitement to the series in general. The Digitalis arc was alright. I'm honestly not sure I like the concept of a digital planet because it just felt like a ripoff of Isekai. I don't understand why everything on the planet was done in RPG style like an actual video game. Digitalis is supposed to be a digital planet. Just because it's digital doesn't mean it has to be a video game. The lack of originality just turned me off from this arc. It was just very random and we didn't really even get to spend much time on this planet, so it didn't really feel like a fun adventure. I did somewhat enjoy Hermit's backstory as it was very tragic, however it was kind of obvious that she was going to be portrayed by those human scientists. It's not necessarily a bad thing that it was obvious though, since humans have been shown to not really care about machines in the anime. However, I do find it a little unrealistic that Hermit wasn't able to figure out what her inventions were going to be used for since she was working closely with the humans on that project. Anyways, I was completely able to understand her hatred for humans, but I don't understand how she was able to overcome that hatred. It doesn't seem as if Shiki did anything special to gain her trust, so the ending of this arc was somewhat confusing. This arc was just a bit all over the place, but in the end I was still able to enjoy it. The Mildian arc was very short, but it was also very awesome. I thought getting to meet the narrator of the series was very cool. Her presence in the story had always been a mystery, and now we finally get an answer as to who Zhao Mei is. Learning about her ability to know everything past, present, and future just makes her being the narrator make that much more sense. That's also why during the normal arc we got a glimpse of what happened 20,000 years in the future. She is using her ability to tell the story of the Demon King Shiki. It was also very cool getting to see the battles in this very short tournament arc. The whole experience was very mysterious and it gave the Eden's crew hints and challenges for the next arc. Oh. 
The Sun Jewel arc was the final arc that this season had to offer. Some parts of the arc were predictable, like the fact that Valkyrie would be replaced by Homura. Just because from a meta perspective, it wouldn't make sense for two people with the same abilities to be part of the same crew, as it would make the less powerful one seem as if they were less useful. But I did enjoy this arc overall. I love the focus on Homura and her mother. I think that the mother is definitely the most hated character for me at this point. I'm not saying that she's a bad character or that she is poorly written, but rather her character was made to be hated. Her lack of concern for people around her made her infuriating to even look at. But moving on, I did have some legitimate frustrations with how Shiki was using his powers in this arc. I feel as if his gravity power should have been stronger than they were shown to be in this arc, but he did seem to have struggled in battle against that giant robot. We don't really have a scale that we can judge his gravity abilities at right now, and that kind of sucks since it's impossible to know how strong Shiki truly is. However, there was a super powered mode that he used in his battle with fake Elsie that we didn't even see him use against the robot he was fighting, so it just didn't make sense for him to be struggling that much. I did find enjoyment in the power rips demonstrated by Homura, Wise, and Rebecca. Rebecca's in particular seemed very interesting. It's unclear what the extent of her cat Leaper is, but it seems like she might actually be able to turn back time. I just can't wait to see how it will evolve in the future. While I did have quite a bit of criticisms for this arc, I actually did enjoy it. And with this arc completed, the Ed and Zero should be at full power and therefore ready for more exciting adventures. Overall, I really did enjoy this anime. I don't like it as much as I like fairy tale yet, but we are still in the early stages of this story. And at the time I am making this recording, there hasn't been any confirmation of a season two, but I do hope that JC staff continues on with this series. I didn't really talk about it in the review, but the animation for this series has been amazing. I especially love the animation effect of Shiki's gravity's powers. That being said, I really do want to see this series be continued as it brought me a ton of enjoyment. The journey has just begun, and I can't wait to see the follow-up. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to leave a like and to smash that subscribe button if you want to see more anime content on this channel. And let me know what you thought about this anime in the comment section down below. I'll see you in the next life. Peace out.